What's up, everybody? Welcome to eBay Business Owners Podcast, episode number three. Today, we're going to go over this in a live format. I am going to actually share um, some things I found out actually at eBay headquarters yesterday. I'm not going to, I actually signed an NDA, so I can't give you guys specifics, but I will give you a couple of the concerns that a lot of people have been having with uh, missing photographs, uh, missing photos. I'm sorry, missing photos. Um, the view count being missing, and also the coveted, um, I mean, not the coveted, but the very scary summer slowdown that everyone is talking about. And I want to address these things with you guys and just hear your thoughts and just have a group conversation about summer. Um, sales are down for a lot of people. For me, sales are up about 20%. Um, that being said, my store is much larger. So I have a much larger store that would normally indicate more sales i feel like right now there are a lot of people not listing uh, it's warm outside it's comfortable kids are out of school there's a lot i feel like people who are just uh, mom and pop shops or if you're doing a part-time or if you're a parent there's a lot of stuff going on in your life right now and it's challenging to get those listings up if you're not getting fresh listings in you're going to be in a bind uh, so the first thing i want to start off with is Griff, who is one of eBay's OG employees, he's employee like number six. He was talking about when he first started listing, there were about a few hundred shirts. Can you imagine you're listing a shirt and there are only a few hundred? He was he was commenting last night that it would be very odd for him to list a shirt and not have it sell in one week. Okay, so this is back in the day, like 22 years ago when eBay first started. So he would list something and it would be odd if it didn't if it took longer than one week for it to sell now that same search instead of a few hundred results there are 20 million results for just men's shirt that is scary that's crazy there's 20 million other people competing with you for the exact same item so now he's like it may never sell it may take a year to sell it may take five years to sell there's so much competition now it's very very different than the original thing and for him from 22 years ago till now one thing has worked for him to get more sales. And I'm sure this has worked for everybody who's in the chat right now. He says, no matter what eBay changes are happening, whenever he lists a big bulk of items, he considers a bulk like 10 or more listings, he'll always have at least one or two items sell right away from that new batch and also one old item. So I don't know if it's true in the chat, if you guys believe that, it's true for me if I post a whole bunch of items all in a row and a big boost into the system, it's very odd that I don't sell at least one and then one from a previous section, a previous era of listing. So I want to go over a few ideas with you guys and hear your thoughts. And the first one is this continuous listing thing. Okay. So for me, I really do believe it. I believe that it boosts your entire store, although there's not like a specific reason in the algorithm that if you list a bunch of items, it'll boost you. But I think it does work. So for me, I would rather you list 30 items all at one time and get that boost versus two or three or five a day over the course of seven days. That's just me. Some people schedule it out, right? And they do, you know, a couple every day and they trickle it in. But for me, it's the opposite. I get way more boost if I just do it all at one time. And one of the stores that I am copying, that you guys know, they list 100 new items every single day, right? Seven days a week over the past five years, they're listing 100 items every single day. They have a ridiculous sell-through rate, and they do $3 million a year, and it's two ladies in Brooklyn. Of course, they have, they have some help also, but 100 items a day, why would they be doing that every single day? Because probably it gives you some type of a jolt, although it's not... It's not guaranteed by either that you're going to get that boost, but I do like the infusion all at once of a giant bunch of listings. Okay, so let's address summer slowdown. Is anybody in the chat um, experiencing summer slowdown? I'm I'm experiencing a little bit slower sales, but overall my sales are higher in the last 30 days, and that's just be, probably because my store is bigger. But um, is anybody experiencing summer slowdown? Because I'm going to give you eBay's opinion on it, which is they're having the best summer ever. Okay, so. They want you to make sure that you're comparing your summer slowdown right now over last year. What did you do in June last year over June this year versus maybe the last few months? Because if you guys didn't know, eBay had its biggest year ever last year at its biggest quarter ever this first quarter of this year. So eBay is not dying. eBay is crushing. It's on fire. Nobody at eBay looks like they're stressed out. I talked to like six different departments yesterday. Shout out to Melissa for showing me around. Very cool. 
no one looks stressed out. Everyone looked very happy. Like their like their jobs are very safe. eBay's growing. It's killing. They're hiring tons of people. I just spoke at the Becoming eBay Summit, which is like hundreds of new employees listening to sellers. So we give our gripes and they're like, okay, we were hired to fix those things. There's like over a hundred people that have been hired just to work on payments. Everyone's super excited on, um, it's probably way more than that, but in that section of people that I was talking to, a big chunk of them was payments, right? So we're talking about simplifying the eBay invoice, which is ridiculously complicated. If you guys know, when you get a bill from eBay, there's the insertion fee for the item. There's the final value fee on the price that you sell it at. If you charge shipping, there's a final value fee on the shipping charge, right? Because they don't want people doing a dollar for your item and 99 for shipping and avoiding the final value fee. And there's also now a promotional ad fee, which is confusing because it can also be credited back because you get a credit if you have a store. Uh, that's for a different video. But if you have a, a store subscription, you get a credit towards using some promoted listings. So it's extremely complicated to say the least. We're talking about if you're selling even 100 items a month, that's 400 lines of fees that you have to go through and confirm and plus all the people who buy something and do not pay. You have to reconcile and make sure the four charges you got reconcile with the four credits you get to undo that, right? So it's very, very complicated. And they're, obviously they know that. They're not trying to make building as complicated as possible. Although that is one conspiracy theory that um, eBay is making it as complicated as possible. So we don't understand what we're actually paying for. I've heard of that. It's like, um, if you want to cancel your subscription, please mail a postcard to Bermuda to Jackie. And within two to six weeks, she'll send back another postcard, which will give you a code to log on to the site. And then you can cancel your subscription and get your money back. It's not like that. I don't think eBay actually designed it to be that complicated. It just is. And so hopefully one day it will be, um, it will be credit. Uh, it'll be fee netting. So it's a hundred dollars. Once they pay, they will take their fee and give us the rest of the money instead of charging us for fees, whether or not they pay and then us having to figure it out after the fact, extremely complicated. Even so my official, I mean, eBay hasn't said it, but they're having their best months ever. So they're not struggling as a whole. Now that being said individually. Okay. I believe just from me looking at different sellers that sales are generally down. If you are doing the exact same thing as last year, it would not surprise me if your sales are down because eBay has a lot of new campaigns, some of which I will talk about coming up as soon as they let me talk about them. I will tell you probably five or six features that eBay is going to release. I probably can't talk about it until after eBay open, but there are a few features they're going to release that are going to make eBay ridiculous. And the way I define ridiculous is people are going to start making content to help eBay sell stuff. And right now, in my opinion, Amazon has a monopoly on that. Amazon's affiliate program is so sexy at 6% commission. You guys could sell nothing. You could open up a blog talking about popular cameras, review cameras all day, have zero stock and get 6% commission. Every time somebody reads your blog and buys the camera on, on Amazon, you can get really into four or five niches, build websites and kill it. There's a, there's a channel called homemade entrepreneur. If you guys watch that guy, you don't need to have any physical inventory and sell a ton of stuff. Amazon will give you 6%, which is amazing. You don't have to do anything. 6% is more than some people make as the manufacturer of the item. Okay, so 6% is awesome. eBay's affiliate program is super, super weak. It's so weak that all eBay influencers like myself use Amazon links. I would rather you buy something on Amazon because I get a higher commission than if you buy something on eBay. They're going to do something that changes that. Okay, so you guys really need to get on social media and learn how to sell. Shout out to Wade's Ventures. He is on it. So as you guys know, I really don't know how to run a, a YouTube channel. So Wade is always helping me figure out how to do things. And if it, like it's beyond me to how to do any of these features. I have to ask Wade how to do it. Like it still says 10K on the bay in my in my link to to my to my, all of my things in my channel, like the bookmarks. I don't know how to fix that. So I have to get with Wade after this channel, after the show and fix that. But anyway, it's good to have good friends around you that you can reach out to and fix things. Um, I'm going to take a cup or Scott, I'm going to get to that question in just a second. Um, okay. So that being said, overall, I think all sellers, if you're doing the same thing, you will experience a downturn because eBay has all these crazy new initiatives and massive, massive programs going on until you guys actually go to eBay. You have no idea how big they are. Just to give you guys an idea of how insane the traffic is on eBay.com. 
they get over a billion unique visitors per month. And according to the meeting last night, 160 million different people buy something on eBay every month. That is, if you can't make it work on eBay, you probably may not make it as a business person. I'm sorry to say that, but like there's 160 million customers you should be able to find something that people can buy, right? That's a lot of freaking people that are on the website, a billion people in traffic. To give you a, a comparison, I don't know how true this is, but I was just doing the traffic search report and Poshmark has 40 million unique visitors per month, which is staggering also, considering there's only 350 million people and they just started 10 years ago and 40 million people are already browsing the site unique per month. That's also amazing. eBay is worldwide and uh, Poshmark is just the US, so 40 million, still very impressive. And um, Mercari is very strong also, and TradeZ much, much, much lower. So that kind of you know entices me to which platform I'm going to go to based on just traffic. But now looking at the two big guys, Amazon, eBay, eBay is number two, Amazon is number one. You could just focus on one of those two, to be honest, and, and totally kill it. You don't need to do other platforms, but it's always nice to look at the traffic. eBay is killing it. Okay, let me get in the next thing. Let's go into the missing photos because that's something that a lot of concerns um, people are, are wondering what are happening to their photos. It's happened to me. Um, so with a lot of listings that you'll see people talking about in the Facebook groups or Instagram, all of the images are missing. Okay. So that's kind of a problem because you can't buy it and you're not even supposed to submit a listing with a photo without a photo being, being listed. So obviously we entered the photos in and then the photos are now missing. So that is, that's fine. That's, that is reality. And so, they they know that, that is occurring but they're not going to fix it they may not be able to recover the the images so i recommend you just move on I, it's happened to me where it's erased all the photos except for the gallery photo okay so just the gallery photo all the other photos are missing so i don't have time to complain because i don't even have enough time to improve my store okay so i don't have any complaints i'm just going through my listings as you guys know on wednesday nights i go through and adjust about 25 percent of my um, listings and I'm finding those like tonight after the, after my calls I'm gonna go through my listings and look for things that are wrong with them and adjust it and move on I don't have time to complain or read about other people complaining because it's just it's not useful and it's such a ridiculous small amount of listings on ebay.com it's not even worth announcing because if they're gonna announce it they basically make the entire site panic when it only affects a very very tiny amount of people and as you guys know when you complain it's really loud. Other people who are having the same issue will jump in and be like, eBay's broken. We should all quit and get regular jobs. I, I, I don't think so. I think that it's stronger than ever. You could definitely make eBay as a living, so don't panic. Um, but again, the missing image thing they know, but it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of um, people who are experiencing that problem. It's just that even me, I'm experiencing that problem, but I honestly don't have time to talk about it too much. The next thing is um, the missing views. That's been happening for like over a month. Missing views has been a thing for a long time. So how you can actually look at it is go to your performance tab. If you have a store, um, go to the traffic on the left side and then scroll all the way to the bottom and you can look at the views of your items. It is inconvenient though, because you can't look at it on your phone and determine the, the uh, viability of it. The listings haven't, your items aren't not being viewed because that would be impossible because you're gonna get views on eBay if you're listing the correct way. And also the there's gonna show on there um, watchers. So there's no way obviously to get five watchers on an item if you don't have any views. The views are just not populating. They're gonna fix that eventually. In the meantime, use the performance tab, listing, scroll down, look at your most popular items, buy stuff that more people look at to sell and buy less of the stuff that people are not looking at. I know that sounds kind of dumb or cliche, but that's why when I posted it on my Instagram today, I didn't show you guys which items are selling best for me. I'd rather you guess from looking at my store because I don't want to tell you what's good because if I tell you what's good, then it's no longer good for me. Um, let's go to the next question or the next term, which is, um, okay. Some of the glitches are involved with third-party listers. Okay, so like Inkfrog or Octiva or other sites that are using it, it's kind of buggy right now, so people are losing stuff. And if you use a third-party lister for anything, the site is never going to cover you or care if something happens because they don't have time to even fix the stuff that's on their own website. If you're using a third-party website to do anything, they're always going to blame that third-party site and you'll lose your privileges. This is the exact same reason why I do not use a bot anymore on Poshmark because if I did, I wouldn't be covered by any kind of an issue because Poshmark doesn't cover third-party issues. It's not their problem. Something screws up 
and it's because of a different service you're using, they're going to ban you and you're not going to have any recourse because it's not their fault. You're using some other type of tool. It's like a blanket. Don't use other third party sites because if you do, we can't take care of you. We can only take care of you use our own site. So I shifted my mindset towards not doing that anymore. Um, so anyway, that's just that's off topic, but that's a third party thing. So if you're using a third party tool, make sure to know that by using it, you're basically putting yourself a little bit at risk versus listing directly on the website. Um, so let's get into questions because there's a lot of them and we'll see what you guys um, have to say. Um, thank you very much, um, Hasori. I will be doing regular videos starting next week, actually a video every single day. I have my schedule set up, should be able to do one every day. I am hiring a second person to give me more time. I now have a, a more part-time assistant and one more person helping me with listings, so I should have a lot more time to do this. Um, okay, sorry, there's tons of questions. Um, let's see. You want to do, Shafaz wants to do $10,000 a week. I is that gross or is that net i'm i'm just i for the first time ever this month i will average over ten thousand dollars a week in sales it's the first time ever that's happened for me i'm having without question the best month and the best quarter in my e in my e-commerce career i'm killing it right now um hopefully i can help you get there but it took a long time a lot of adjusting and a lot of improvements to get there so just stay patient you'll get there i started with nothing also um dapper dude is asking about etsy Etsy is ahead of the curve, just like Amazon. They're already charging sales tax. They're all about the maker. I think Etsy is very strong. They look very business oriented. Um, let's say you're getting screwed by eBay scammers. Here's another concept that I want to share with you guys really quick is that if you look at the way eBay is set up, they have the a guaranteed shipping button right there, very prominent. Uh, they're going to start making free shipping and free returns like the most important part of the shopping experience, to be honest, because they need people to buy things. And for me, uh, I don't shop that much on eBay, unfortunately, but if I did, what I want to do is get on there and maybe click free, re free returns, free shipping three days. I actually just did that. I ordered some fragile tape and I wanted to know how I wanted stuff right away. Um, I wanted the free shipping and free returns in case the tape sucks. And a lot of the tape that I buy is horrible. The worst tape ever is the free USBS tape that you're supposed to use for um, brown boxes is horrible. Next most horrible is the eBay tape that's free with your store subscription is horrible. I, I anticipate that the fragile sticker tape that I get will be the third worst tape because it's really, really ridiculously cheap. So I'm just assuming it's going to be horrible. So that being said, I want to be able to return it if it truly sucks. So this person has free return, free shipping on an item that's $5.55 shipped okay and i can tell you the roll of tape is going to be eight ounces or more so we're talking about three dollars for shipping five it's 544 or 575 shipped okay this is what you guys and myself are competing against people who are moving thousands and thousands of units at potentially less than a dollar profit just to move volume because it's just it's just churning 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 that person i think sold 1700 units of this tape right so at 50 cents that's still 800 bucks that's the new eBay that we're playing on. Um, somebody just dropped a super chat. I'll get to you in just a second. Actually, let me go to that first. Mindy, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, you just got a copyright strike removal for using a stock photo from eBay. That's great. Um, so eBay is going to start trying to hold its own photos like Amazon. So if you get a strike for a copyright, make sure that you fight it and try to get it removed from your account. It's very important. Um, awesome. So Melissa just went through her listings and where the pictures were gone and put the pictures back in. Um, and that's when the store started selling again. I'm glad to hear that. So definitely guys, check your store. I recommend doing it every week. One of the tips I give is, um, I went to uh, eBay a while ago and Griff, the first thing he said to me was, are you doing 30 day canceled, 30 days auctions, or are you doing good till canceled? And I said, I'm doing 30 days because at the end of 30 days, I'll go in and adjust it and then, um, relist it and I get a new item number and it'll be a fresh listing. And he was like, bro, if you only adjust your listings once per month, you're going to get crushed by people who do it every day or every week. And I was like, how can a small seller like me check my listings every single day? But I'm just saying it's a reality that their store is big enough that they're constantly reviewing their listings and they may have less. There might be a store of a hundred replenishables with a team of five. So five people make sure a hundred listings are running at peak velocity all year versus you small mom and pop person trying to survive you have all this random stuff you're not paying attention to all of them you're competing against 
ninjas. Okay, you're competing against ninjas as a civilian. It's very challenging. Um, how does this work for feedback if somebody says the item defects were not included in the images? Scott, this is a good point. This is one of the reasons why I just switched to free returns again. So um, I turned it off for a second because I was a little bit afraid. Um, I'm doing more volume and I didn't want more returns. But I've since turned it off because if you go into the listing, I mean, if you get a negative feedback and go back to eBay and say, look, I offer free returns for any reason within 30 days. It's totally unreasonable this person left me a negative feedback because I offer the ability to return the item at my expense. eBay will most likely just remove the feedback for you. It's very important to know that because they do not want you to provide ridiculous customer service and be at risk for a negative feedback. It's very unlikely that they won't remove it for you. Unless you did something egregious, they're going to side with you because they want to protect their sellers. They need us. Um, they're just moving more towards as many buyers as possible, right? For as cheap as possible with the highest customer service as possible. And that's what you guys would be trying to do also if you were trying to acquire, um, acquire new people. This is why like Mercari, when they launched in the US, they didn't have listing fees. Obviously that doesn't make sense, but then a lot of people are gonna get, come onto the website and now they're crushing the search algorithm probably because of, of conversion. Um, let's see here. Katie Zilberberg, expect, oh, interesting. I'll reach out to Katie and see how we can get our pictures back. It's not guaranteed though. You're not gonna get your pictures back guaranteed. There might be a way to try to get them back, but again, it's not guaranteed. The photos might be lost, just move on watch Katie's video. She's going to be at my event in Can in uh, Las Vegas. So if you guys are coming to eBay Open the day after, yeah, on Friday at the Blind Center, I'm hosting a live event with a bunch of people. It's charity, 100% to the Blind Center. There's no profit for me to make those straight to the charity. In fact, if you come to the event and you don't buy a ticket online uh, through the charity auction, you can just give the money directly to the charity. So um, it's also going to be streamed live. So hopefully you guys can support it and just help that charity. It's a very cool seven-figure nonprofit eBay charity. It's cool. So you should definitely check it out. Um, how can you fix your listings if you don't have time to look at it? Agreed. It's so freaking hard. There's another company, Datamine, that reached out to me today for a demo, and they're talking about helping us with automation, giving us tools where we can adjust um, our listings autom automatically without having to go in there and better use our promoted um, listings budget, so not just be stuck in there you know, putting 1% or market plus 1% when some items would sell without promotions and some wouldn't. And how do we know or have time to even go through that? We don't. So there's gotta, we have to learn how to use tools and software to help with that. Uh, when am I gonna post a photography video? It's posted. So my photography video is free and it's already posted on how I take my photos on my listings. I would consider the way I do photographs a good marriage between speed and quality. Um, my photos aren't perfect by any means, but they're better than 90% of people's photos on eBay. So you could do the extra 10% if you want to, but it's also a lot more expensive to do that. Um, I can crank out more than 200 items in eight hours with the process that I have, which is fast enough. And if you wanna slow it down to make them perfect, you can, but it's just up to you on time. Um, Let's see. Thank you, Hasten, again. Uh, all your pics saved on folders. That's a good idea. You guys should have a backup of all your photos if you can. I have a Dropbox folder of every single eBay fo uh, photo I've ever taken. So, I mean, it's a lot of photos. It's I should I should probably figure out a way to archive it, but I have it. Um, awesome. Uh, if you want to join the group next week, my Patreon group is still open. It's 100 people. We talk about processes every day. As an example, this evening, we're working on accounting this whole week. We're working on making it so when you go to the thrift store and you come home, you enter in your receipt information on a form. Where were you? How much did you spend? What day is it? How many items did you buy? Done. And then it keeps track of it all for you so you know how much money you spent this month, how much profit you have. We're working on that this evening because a lot of people have asked for help with accounting. That's what we work on in my group every week, and we make sure you do what you're going to say. Otherwise, why are you in the group? Uh, ooh. So Stitch, which is talking about the cash, the cash tab. I will, I will look in. I'll probably do another show with Katie. Maybe, maybe next week, and we'll talk about this process for people who are still having issues. Um, let's see here. Maya, thank you, thank you for the super chat. Awesome. I'm hanging out with Maya at eBay Open. I'm so excited to meet her finally. Um, and she thinks she can out drink me, but that's not possible because uh, I have a long history. I used to run a beer pong company for a living. You can't out drink me. I'm just, I'm just not about that life anymore. I'm about to retire from the party game 
and be a uh, family dude. So, but still have the drinking chops. Don't worry. Um, it's not showing the, oh, if you refresh it, it'll show the views. That's, that's also not like, um, that's not guaranteed that it will refresh the views yet. I've heard somewhere on the internet that it's going to be fixed July 5th. I don't know. I would just not worry about it right now and focus on increasing the amount of stuff that you have listing and optimizing your listings. And if you really want to know your views, again, go to performance, traffic, and then scroll down to the bottom. It'll show you your views. Um, also, oh, yeah, Hasten is talking about 6-Bit. Six 6-Bit, Six Ink Frog, Octiva, all those sites are having weird bugs. And they put in stuff in their listings so that they can track what's going on. And I don't know if eBay's systems don't like whatever that tr tracking device is, but it's causing a lot of issues, in my opinion. But I don't know. All I know is that some people's pictures problems were caused by third parties, not just um, eBay's fault. Another weird thing, if you guys have noticed this, maybe put this in the chat if you've experienced this. When I'm trying to reply to a message on my phone, it says you cannot reply to yourself, which is very odd. I'm not trying to reply to myself, but it won't let me change who I'm sending a message to. So officially, I cannot contact any of my seller, any of my buyers on my app. I have to log into my computer and message them in the section. I don't know if that's the same for you guys, but I can't send a message currently on my phone. I've even re-downloaded the app, deleted it. It still doesn't work, so hopefully that will get fixed soon. I don't know the issue. Um, let's see. Yeah, I know. Poshmark is fire. Thanks, Ahmad. It, it's killing it. Um, Poshmark is really, really amazing right now. But I'll tell you about the... Um, I'll tell you about the... About Poshmark. It is... It's going to become super saturated. And with the... I, I can already feel it. I can feel it's going to become really, really populated and get really challenging. Just like as soon as all the business sellers come to Poshmark, it's over. It's going to turn into eBay again. It's going to be tough. If you're not really good at it, you're going to get crushed. Right now, it's kind of a free-for-all because it's brand new, but I, I don't believe that that's going to continue the case. I'm already bracing myself for that platform to slow down. Like um, There's other influencers talking about it. Poshmark is growing. I don't think it has the traffic to sustain that much stuff. But I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. I don't Personally, I think the traffic on not the traffic, but the sales will go down on Poshmark, just like eBay. But Poshmark itself will grow. Just that's just how I see it. It's my opinion. Um, there's no reason for me to lie. I don't get paid by either platform, unfortunately. So I have I'm I have no allegiance to any of them. Um, okay, that's a good that's a good um, suggestion, Tom, to have um, navigation on the top. I think it's just designed for your thumb. I, I, I know what you're saying. It's annoying not having navigation on the top because that's how it works on a computer. But um, I'll look at I'll look at the, the UI. Sometimes they present wireframes and they're like, um, this is the flow, right? What do you think? And usually I'm like, that looks horrible because it doesn't it doesn't work. Like for example, on mobile, I don't know why we don't have um, the ability to do um, business policies. Like, are you serious? How can we not do business policies on mobile? Like, it's insane. We have to enter in the shipping and payment and re return information every time. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. Um, you know, trying to make a dollar profit, you need to sell massive, massive stuff. Prince and I were looking. Prince is Prince Patel now. Shout out to Prince. Um, he and I were talking about this. There are stores that nothing is over seven ninety nine shipped. Like, how do you even do that? This is a U.S. based seller, so I'm not a Chinese seller. U.S. based seller, seven ninety nine shipped across the board. That's insane. How do you even? How do you live at that kind of margin? You just have to have a big, a big time operation. Levon, thank you so much. I actually still have lots of stores, Scott. Um, I have one store. It's all replenishables. I don't talk about. Um, and so, one more tip for you guys. Hopefully, you have a pen and paper. I want you guys to write this down. You have to hustle. 50 to 100 items a week for their forever kind of <laughs> and, oh okay during the time of growth you have to hustle 50 to 100 items a week and make as much profit as you can okay so you have to hustle go to garage sales go to the thrift store look for um, estate sales try to pick ridiculous home runs because you need that money to fund growth you need to buy stuff that's replenishable so i have a store that's all stuff i order from china I'm trying to grow that, right? And I can't share that with you because then you could order it from China. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that route, but you need to multiply your time. And so for me, the reason replenishables work is because once they sell out, you can order it again without having to re-research the item. This is why I met a big Amazon seller in Kansas City 
that quit Amazon and moved into rentals because they're like, I hate Amazon. When it sells, I need to go find it again and resell it. But if I do rentals, people rent my jet ski and they bring it back to me and I can rent it to somebody else. I no longer need to do that, but it costs a fortune to have a whole bunch of equipment that people can rent. So to each his own, you can always graduate. Uh, what are my thoughts on light boxes for pics? Oh, um, I do. I do have a light box. Um, I have a light box and it's great. It's great for taking photographs, um, but I don't do that. I just use two light boxes. My photo videos on my on my chat. You guys can take a look. A light box is much better if you only sell shoes, in my opinion. Um, take a look at my listings. Check out my Poshmark or my eBay store. All the photos are almost identical. That's the most important thing to have consistency in your photos. You don't need a light box. The second largest shoe seller, if not the first largest, Apparel Safe, their pictures are are ass. I'm probably gonna lose my monetization for swearing, but they're straight ass. They're horrible. And um, the reason why they did that is to reduce returns. So it looks really janky in the photo. It's white background, but it's not super bright like a light box. It's just average. And so when you get it, you're like, wow, she was way better than the picture. The picture looked horrible. It looks great in person. That's what they're trying to do by just presenting a natural light photo. And I have no issue with that to the point where I only have one good photo, the, the gallery photo. The rest of the photos are, are natural lighting because I don't want to over promise and under deliver. I want people to be like, oh, he actually has it and it looks all right. And then when they get it, they're like, oh, damn, it's pretty good. Um, nice. Why am I being targeted? I'm being targeted because I have a lot of um, ridiculous ideas and I try to push the model, the, the, the push the envelope. Like, I'm, if I just did the same thing every week, it'd be really boring. So I'm okay with the haters at this point. Usually people who are hating are hurting. Um, so once I learned that, I read the four agreements. I don't have time to hate because I'm not hurting. Honestly, I'm in a very good place right now. I'm super grateful. My life has been very nice. I'm starting to get abundance. What's the, what's the reason for me to hate? I don't I don't have anything to hate about. And there's no I'm not hurting anymore, so there's no reason for me to hate. I don't even hate my haters. My haters are fine. My haters are cool. Like if they want to tell me they don't like the way I do business, that's great. In fact, hopefully it helps me improve. Um, I had somebody say I was rude to customers today and it didn't bother me. I just said that you're right. I actually, sometimes I am overly rude to customers and I will stop that. It's not professional. Although I get a kick out of it, it's not important. I'd rather be rich than funny. So there's no reason for me to troll my own customers, right? They're the ones spending money in my own store. Um, well, another super chat. Thank you, handsome devil. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stream the event <clears throat> in uh, Las Vegas, and one of the and I think Wade's Venture is gonna be talking too. The the reason why I'm gonna live stream is because I want you guys to see what a seven figure store looks like. I, I'm curious too. I've never actually been in a facility that does seven figures before ever. Um, what do I think of is the future for reselling for one thousand a week profit? Um, to be honest with you guys, I think that it's very important to get the five hundred dollars a day. Okay. To do fifteen thousand to get your five thousand dollars, which is um, one third profit. I think the days of doing ten thousand dollars and five thousand dollars profit are over. So I don't know if you guys agree with me, the o the OG people in the chat. Um, you can do that if you want to hunt and find fifty to one hundred items of the home run stuff and do ten thousand and do five. But you're going to be spending a lot of your time hunting, right? Versus if you just learn how to do wholesale, learn how to do relationships, learn a niche, you can do five thousand profit on fifteen thousand in sales. And not have to leave right and not have to, to to brutally drive thousands of miles every single month right you can just tone it down a little bit and source a little bit less so i think it's very challenging to do five thousand profit on ten thousand in sales now it's just so competitive in every single category let's see here they say todd's saying you can get your pictures back by looking into your cash heard that from a bunch of people maybe that's katie's tip uh Let's see. All your pics are in folders also. Awesome. Thank you, Lee. Awesome. Uh, I'm trying to be neutral, but there are some, some things I have strong opinions with, but not not really. I'm pretty neutral these days. Is there a good software to cross-list all of your listings to Poshmark? No. There's a bunch of sites like Sellhound last night presented at eBay. This is cool. eBay is innovative. They let a company that lets you post on different platforms speak. Okay? That's pretty... Not like eBay, okay? eBay's trying to be hip, they're trying to be new. eBay knows that millennials don't use eBay, okay? They're trying to fix that. Young people don't use eBay, they don't know what it is. They think it's a flea market. They don't realize that 86% of stuff on eBay is new. They don't know that. 
Um, I haven't had any issues with desktop Poshmark. I, I didn't have any issues today. Maybe you can shoot me an email. Uh, anyone can shoot me an email, chris at dailyrefinement.com. I usually will respond, hopefully, in less than two days. Um, let's see. Ah, th this is this is interesting. Um, Poshmark, oh, there's a lot of sellers that are desperately getting rid of their items. I, I, I think eBay is like that, too. Both platforms, people are desperately getting rid of their items. They're just, they're just like literally giving away their stuff for pennies on the on a dollar i've purchased five bundles on e on poshmark all for super dirt cheap so it's definitely competitive you can and i i consider myself a business and a business versus a hobby seller i'm gonna win every time that's how i look at it it's like michael jordan no, i'm like i'm not gonna say i'm michael jordan but let's say i'm like uh kyle corver i want to be the kyle corver of ebay i don't know if you guys know who that is but uh he's a pretty good shooter but kind of worthless us uh, now because he's older that's that's how i kind of feel i want to be the Kyle corver of ebay so uh, i want to be a professional but like not not one of the best yet or maybe maybe Kyle corver is a silly example but anyway i want to be a professional at seller so that when i'm competing against amateurs it's like taking candy from a baby um uh, yeah that, no I don't have different eBay sites because I'm doing something illegal because that doesn't work, right? If it cancel one account, they're going to cancel all your IP accounts. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm just selling stuff I don't want you guys to sell the same thing of, right? Even my daily refinement two store, which is public, I'm just saving. I'm going to do drop shipping on that account. It has a hundred thousand item limit. So as soon as I figure out drop shipping with Jack Pittman, if you guys don't follow his channel, Jack Super Dope, he is in my mastermind group answering questions about about drop shipping he has like seven thousand dollars a month in ebay fees okay so for all of you guys are complaining about your tiny bills he has seven thousand dollars a month in ebay insertion fees okay insertion fees he's currently the only person i know that has an enterprise uh, subscription of a hundred thousand listings and it's not even enough okay so it's just why are people complaining don't complain spend your time making your store better um let's see robin what's up um katie walks through the entire process awesome so i will i should just have her come on i should just ask her if i can download that and re-upload it and maybe i'll 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 buy her a couple of drinks in vegas with victoria um okay pedro is asking about doing um replenishable inventory on ebay so basically what you do um and i'm, I'm learning too i'm learning from prince uh, what he does is he finds stuff that's popular on ebay um for example fidget spinners okay not fidget spinners inflatable animals are very popular right now so you'll look at inflatable flamingo it's selling for whatever and you go on to aliexpress alibaba.com and you search inflatable flamingo and you find one and you order some and test it and you do that over and over again until you have x amount of items that sell x times per day the the amazon model is find 10 items that sell 10 times a day for ten dollars profit there's your thousand dollars that's not what you do in a year. Let's do over your whole career of reselling. You find 10 items that sell 10 times a day, okay? Your career, not in one second. So don't try to do it all in one day. You can't. You have to do it one at a time. Maybe you'll fail five times in a row and get one. Maybe you'll get two in a row. Maybe you'll be really lucky and get five in a row. Maybe you'll be unlucky and lose 10 times in a row. You never know. It's hard. So that's more risky than just thrifting or finding items in the wild that already have a market, low competition, and you're buying cheap um let's see awesome thank you bullpen let's see and, and and full disclosure everybody knows on my channel the reason i do my channel is so i can improve my own store so like i myself i feel you have to love yourself first so you can love everybody else i'll share my journey with you guys and hopefully you guys are learning something from these videos but i would say these videos are 80 percent entertainment um because most of the stuff in my video you are not going to do I would like you to take one nugget from each of my videos and then go actually do it. Okay, don't just watch me and then don't do anything. Um, you have best offer on because you, you, your store doesn't allow you to haggle price. I know it it, it sucks. I I don't like best offer, but uh, I think it's part of the eBay algorithms and it's also the same on Poshmark. You can't even toggle it off. So um, I'm okay with best offer, but I don't like it. It's just one of the things I don't like, but I have. What's up, Savvy Siegel? Katie Zilverberg is an um, awesome reseller. She's a winner of eBay Shine Award. 
and I should link her channel in the description below if I know how to do that. Um, I have to reach out to Wade. He is always helping me figure out how to do things. Um, and she has a great channel. She's very cool. I should do some more collaborations with her. Very nice lady. She has a relationship with another eBay seller. They live together and run two different stores. That's amazing. Can you imagine that? Where you live with somebody, you guys run different stores, and you don't hate each other? I don't know how you could do that. It's amazing. Um, how are you adjusting to the new 14-day wait for sales? Okay, this is a touchy subject. I am exempt from that. Okay, so I can run a sale immediately. I don't have to wait. It's not forever. It's just temporary. Like I'm one of the people that doesn't have that restriction. Even though I don't have that restriction, I don't run any sales. Okay, and the reason is because I'm too small to constantly keep up with the sales. So I, I what I used to do is I used to hop on, right? I list my items the next day or that evening, I would run a sale on all my items, 50% off, basically a fake sale. Mark all my items up, mark them down, right? But I would forget, right? And eBay takes a while to index, especially if you have a large store. So let's say you have 2000 listings and you hit submit to run the sale on all of them and it takes 12 hours for, you know, however long it takes, it's different for, it might be instant, it might be a day. And there's somebody who hits your item and they would buy it, but it's marked 50% too high because your sale hasn't hit yet. That's a waste of a customer. Maybe they would have bought it, but they, they don't buy it and they go on to the next person who's $10 more than your 50% off sale and they just buy it from that person because they don't want to wait. So I don't keep track of that anymore. I'm running promoted listings because I feel like it's becoming pay to play. And my most unpopular advice ever is I think everyone in the chat should make a bigger store and people i get like crazy angry messages from people i don't want a bigger store i want the same store and the same profit and i'm like i just don't i don't see how that's possible the way that ebay is moving and how how does that work in any industry i don't know um owen i charge shipping on almost all my items i don't think that that's weird that you don't charge for shipping and you, I mean, I'm sorry that you don't have free shipping and your sales have increased. In fact, I have my customers earn free shipping. So it's like if you do two or more items, this all the items after the first item are free for free shipping. But you have to pay at least one shipping charge. So you can adjust it. Um, you don't you don't have to um, offer free shipping. You don't to, to succeed. In fact, tons of sellers, tons of the biggest sellers charge for shipping. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to offer free returns either. You charge for shipping and charge for returns and still do fine just it's it's stacked against you um you just became full-time after 10 years amazing sandy um you need ten thousand dollars a month um any tips yes you think you need fifty two thousand dollars worth of stuff listed okay it's very important and you need to work on your sell through so i was talking to data mine today and they asked me what statistics would you want to know as a seller easy how much stuff do I have listed? Okay, tell me how much stuff is listed. Secondly, tell me how fast I sell things. Okay, I want a decimal point. Chris, you sell things every 50.9 days. Now I'm like, okay, I get it. 50.9 days is about two months. I want to shorten that time so I can use my money more often. So, okay, I got to stop buying a vintage alarm clocks because those take 190 days to sell. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to wait that long. So I started buying things that are more popular to try to shorten that gap. So you have $52,000 worth of stuff listed, okay? And you take some best offers and you do 45 grand in sales over 90 days. So that's you selling that $50,000 worth of stuff for 45 grand over the course of 90 days. Hopefully that makes sense. 15,000 a month, one third profit, five grand. That's how I would organize it, okay? If I was you, that's that's what I'm, I'm pitching on my show. So 15,000 a month in sales, 5,000 profit is the new norm, unless you, Want to hunt for home run items and do 10K and 5K in uh, in profit. And don't say that your profit's 6,000. You don't know that. Most people who say that usually do insanely low volume. If they're like, well, I make $60 out of every 100, you probably don't do very much volume usually. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about low ballers. I'm just, uh, I'm thankful for low balls. I have a hundred dollar item. People offer five dollars all the time. I don't get butt hurt. I have thick lizard skin now after being on YouTube for a year. Um, doesn't hurt. Elegant Noir. I always respond. I always put like, and I have fun with it. I'm like, I think you made a mistake. You offered me only five dollars for a hundred. Did you mean ninety five? And they're like, I didn't mean ninety five, bro. I meant five. Then I'm like, okay, have a great day. Like it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. Like I'm just there to have fun. 
and I get criticized for that, and it's fine because they're probably not going to buy anything anyway. I might as well have a little bit of fun so I can have a good attitude for the rest of my other customers. Um, yeah, best offers except for kids' clothes. I like that. Some people do best offers on things that are over $25 and under $25. That's it. You want it, you take it or you don't. How do I address people talking numbers in the comment section on Poshmark? I mean, I just report it as spam over and over again. And if it doesn't go away, I report it to Poshmark through support of Poshmark.com and they remove it. People are annoying. Um, they don't want to commit to a number. It's the same thing as a best offer on eBay. You can submit a best offer on eBay and not pay, right? On Poshmark, you can't do that. You can only leave a number in the comment section to try to devalue the item so that you can get it for cheaper. This is only worth two dollars. That doesn't work for me because I eventually have it removed. How do I adjust my promotion rate? In the eBay promotions tab, you can adjust each promotion higher or lower, a set rate or an, uh, an adjustable one. Uh, everyone is restricted from making a sale in the first 14 days now, it's site-wide. Um, and the people who have exemptions, like me, it's going away. You're not going to get the exemption forever. Plus, sales are, are, I don't know, I think it's a waste of time for small sellers. It's just my opinion. I think it's a waste of time because you could be using that time to list four more items. That's just me, though. I don't, if you guys agree, put it in the chat. If you disagree, put it in the chat. I think I'd rather list 10 more items than run a sale. You don't have you. You work full time. I work full time. I'm I'm working five full time jobs, bro. Just kidding. I, I mean, I really don't know what it's like to work hard because I don't have any kids. I have, I have no concept. Um, yeah. If you guys could help me out, please hit the like button. If you want other people to to find this material, or you find it useful or entertaining. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button so I know not to talk about random stuff too much. Do I know if eBay has employees on Instagram? Not really. Uh, oh, do they? Oh, yeah. There's tons of employees on Instagram. Tons, tons. And eBay has. I always misquote this number. I know they have more than ten thousand employees, but I always say like fourteen or nineteen or seventeen. So I don't know the exact number, but more than ten thousand employees. Obviously, a lot of them are on Instagram. So don't say anything that you'll regret later. Like, if you sign up for eBay, you'll you'll instantly turn into a goat. Right? Don't say stuff like that because you might they might ban you. What's up, Vicky? Um, well, two full weeks. That's true. Okay, two full weeks. Sorry, I'm clarifying that. You can't run a sale for two full weeks. Um, I do have an exemption, but I still don't run sales. So I know it works. Okay, it works. It's just I'm just saying that for me, I'd rather list a few more items than work than work on the sale and forget about it and have all my items listed too high because I didn't remember to adjust my sale. But that's just me. How long do I run promoted listings? Continuously. Damn, I'm getting so many offers on Kate Spade items still. So rest in peace, Kate Spade, but she's making all of us lots of money if you have some stuff. I don't necessarily think you should mark it up, but it should sell faster. Uh, oh, that's that's very true, Lee. Uh, especially for Sorel Boots. For me, Sorel Boots was the first item I sold on Poshmark. 170 something dollars for my first sale. Now I can't even sell them for $79 because it's warm. So I could wait till, till December and sell them for more money again. Uh, Vicky, what's up? Say hi to Katie. I know she did a video. Uh, so I'll link her channel in the description below later. I have to run to the post office after this. As a small seller, sales definitely drive traffic. I agree with you. I'm just saying that I would rather list more items. If sales didn't work, why would they run this new thing where they limit it? Because they don't want people running fake sales, right? Obviously, they work. I'm just saying, do you want to spend your time learning that or do you want to spend your time adding more items to your store? Me, the, the latter. What would I tell Chris from 12 months ago? Um, meet more people sooner. So um, that's it. The more people you meet, the more shortcuts and pitfalls and things you can avoid. Um, I, would, I would actually tell Chris from 10 months ago to meet more people in person more often. Um, I know a lot of resellers in person. I've hung out with them. Last Every month I go to eBay for the meeting. Um, I talked to some eBay employees. I've talked to some Poshmark employees. I haven't talked to Mercari employees yet, but I like talking to the actual staff because they give you more important stuff. I love calling eBay customer support. I have merchant support for the Anchor Store, and I've recorded some of those calls and put them on my channel so you guys can listen to it. Everyone in that department has their own store. Um, shout out to Melissa and Brian. They both um, are in the community. Melissa's in PR. She has her own store. So 
Brian has his own store, even though he doesn't he doesn't sell very much, but he, at least he has a store. So it's almost like the more people you connect with and meet, the easier it is for you to decide what you're doing. And I would say that I'm doing the same amount of effort now, but I'm making four times as much money. Okay, so from from small, tiny, tiny improvements over the course of a year. Uh, also, not afraid to suck. So embrace the suck. I forgot who said that. I'm not afraid to suck, clearly. I've been trying a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't work, and I'm okay with that. Um, this is also a thing. You may not want to go too crazy on experimentation right now because it's crunch time. Q3 is happening right now. Gear up. Get as much good stuff in your store as possible. It's all going to sell in Q4, hopefully. Cross your fingers. Maybe it'll be flooded. Who knows? Do the best that you can. I like experimenting in second quarter, okay, because it's theoretically the slowest time of the year for retail, okay? So that, that's when you should be kind of, you know, thinking around your store and testing different things. Um, but don't do that in Q4, Q3 when sales are supposed to be super hot. All right, guys, hope you're having a great evening. If you guys like this, it will be on iTunes as soon as I figure out how to do that. It's on iTunes, but you, it doesn't download for some reason. So I'll let you guys know when the podcast is fully up so you guys can listen to this in the car. Uh, you can catch me live next week. I will be doing shows every single day. They're going to be usually short format. The only reason I'm coming on live today is because it's cool to talk about all these new changes that eBay is doing. Um, so see you guys um, next week. Email me at Chris at Daily Refinement if you guys have any questions. I wish you really good sales. And please take my advice and just grow your store a little bit bigger, even though it's uncomfortable. I know it's uncomfortable, but it's okay to be uncomfortable because it's going to take you to a different level. eBay is going to get harder and harder to sell and not easier. Okay, they're going to make the platform easier for sellers to jump onto and buyers, which means more competition, but more buyers. All right, guys, encourage you to make progress daily. Take care.